Hello viewers, uh, once again, my name is PewViewJuchu, as uh, some of you may know. Today we're taking a look at another um, Wargame Red Dragon uh, deck and gameplay video. So, um, in my goal of uh, really just checking out the uh, the Red 4 faction, what we can do with these guys, seeing as how not a lot of people play them, um, or at least are not uh, very enthusiastic about them, um, I figured I'd as well make a few decks just to just sort of uh, show them off. So as you might imagine, today we're checking out a uh, a Asianic um, deck featuring North Korea and China on the Red 14. Um, we're playing a 4v4 destruction game mode again. Um, don't actually know the map name for this. Uh, sorry, folks, I'm just not really attentive to the map names here. But um, and it's it's another one of these desert maps. This one in particular is great simply because it has all of these uh, nice little hills and stuff and such. And it is just absolutely wonderful for infantry combat, something that this deck is uh, particularly good for. So, um, my teammates seem to be going straight up into the middle of the map and they're really heavily occupying this zone. Um, if that was me, I would probably space out these units seeing as how this flank is open, but um, oh well. Uh, for now, we are in charge of taking over this area and we're really just supposed to look into this. Um, this map started out, or this match started out with a very, very low amount of um, resource points, meaning that unfortunately, um, I'm not able to buy that many troops to show you guys right off the bat. In fact, all of this crap is uh, where all of these units are um, are actually three different players. Whereas uh, this is yeah, this is my humble little starting position right here. So um, starting off, what are the strengths of uh, China and uh, North Korea in this game? Well, this deck uh, it actually primarily uses Chinese units. The problem with uh, with that is that um, the North Koreans have some nice planes, and they also have some nice supplemental units, which are very very. Uh, useful too so that's kind of the reason why we have them um starting off we have some some of the best uh, some of the best long range infantry inside the game um i'm not going to try to pronounce these names um just sim simply because they have all of these weird you know like the the phonetic lettering to it but anyways we have some of these uh uh tank shashus um 85s and the good thing about these guys is that they possess a very capable uh, little rocket launcher here um, in the meantime some of my general infantry and um, one of the things about this faction is that uh, where the uh, the red dragon deck setups is that uh, they typically feature very very good um, general purpose infantry though uh, as soon as you start to move up you, you can't necessarily find anything with expert training um, or at least as a uh, as much as I would like to see those around, unfortunately. So, uh, what I think I'll do here is that I do have a sniper team, I do have a few other units here, but what I'm actually... Um, what I think I'll do here is that I'll buy some uh, rocket artillery, which is one of the premier things about this uh, faction. Now, um, going back to that one unit, um, these tank killer teams of sorts, they're fairly useful in a sense that uh, they're fairly cheap at 15 points, but um, like we saw in the uh, Eurocore air video, um, Units that possess an HE rocket launcher are very, very useful. And the cool thing about these guys is that they have a very, very high range rocket launcher going at 1.4 kilometers, whereas the uh, the usual guys usually have a, a 500 meter radiate, um, range, or alternatively, some of the more upgraded, more modern units have a uh, 900 meter range. So these guys outrange uh, a lot of those units by far. And they almost have a comparable AT uh, power compared to, say, some of the ATGM launchers, making them really rather helpful. The main thing is that they function, um, they, they're both AP and HE, meaning that they can win a lot of these infantry duels. Unfortunately, they, they are a very small squad with only five people, but the good thing is that they're also fairly cheap as well. So, for example, I saw some of those marines over there, commando marines, and those guys are fairly hard um, hitting infantry units. Now, um, they're elite, so I had to pull back my regular infantry here back, simply because they just didn't cut it. But um, what I think I'll try to do here is that I'll try to push back up there, with um, with my rocket launcher armed troops, uh, which can fire this HE rocket, and we'll really see how that goes. In the meantime, on the side here, um, 
a lot of the factions have snipers, some of them don't. Um, again, the North Korean faction really, really rather complements the uh, the regular decks. Um, mainly in this regard, they have these uh, they have these snipers. Um, they're they're more or less generic snipers, but they're still effective nonetheless, which is the useful thing. Here, I just really want these guys to bank off a few of those uh, little heat shots. Looks like he has actually piled his troops inside that force, so I'm actually going to bail out here. But as you can see here, the shots that we're getting off, it's stunning a lot of their guys. It's panicking a lot of guy, guys, but um, unfortunately, we just don't have the numbers to push up there, unfortunately. Um, but we know where the enemy is, and that means that we can take them out easily. So we'll come back here, and this will be a nice segue into the artillery units. We have some of these very, very cheap, um, but very effective rocket launchers, the BM-24. You can buy a pack of seven of these if you choose the deck specialization. Um, they take a long time to reload, and they don't carry very, very many rockets, but the rockets that they carry are extremely powerful and extremely accurate. So let's see how this wave of uh, rockets really do. That is going to smack right into the middle of them, and it looks like that has taken out uh, three, four, five, six units. I estimate three APCs and then um, two infantry squads. Um, so they're very deadly. Uh, they have a decent speed, although they're a big unit, meaning that they're easily spotted. But they have an absurd road speed of 150 kilometers per hour, meaning that they can just zip around the map, um, assuming that they're on roads, of course. So the French are sending over a light tank, and it looks like one more unit, but those guys should be panicked, so that is good. I'm going to bring in a helicopter, a Susong, which is another complementary um, unit that will be able to do quite a little bit of damage to these guys. So again, North Koreans uh, to supplement the Chinese forces is really how uh, this deck is uh, just going to be sort of played out. Now, as you can see, this is uh, this is the, the tank troops at work using that really long-ranged rocket launcher to good effect. They appear to uh, want to take out my little helicopter, my North Korean transport helicopter, which was used to uh, drop off those snipers. Um, not really much I can do about that, so I think I'll just let them take it and, you know what, sum that to a loss. So, um, again, just some very, very effective units here at play. Um, moving forwards, this deck is mainly based upon infantry, seeing as how that is the main strength. They have these uh, really, really, uh, what I like to call kite rocket launchers, simply because, I mean, the, the people at the at the current uh, metagame, I mean, they don't really expect these units to have that long of range. Um, in the long term, I expect that to change, but these guys are effective mainly because of the, the fact that they have great uh, defensive area control like that. Um, moving forwards, I mean, they have these BM-24s as supporting units, but unfortunately this deck does not feature a very, very good uh, setup for um, support units, mainly because of the fact that the Chinese and the North Koreans, they they, they either have really good missiles, um, like these HQ-61s, but they only carry two of them. They're fairly accurate, granted. You can buy a fair amount of them, granted, but again, they don't carry very many missiles. Um, on the other side, you have these units, which... Uh, uh, like the HQ-7 and the uh, PGZ-95, which are decent in ammunition, however, they do not have a very high range. In the tank department, this deck features a few of these nifty units, cheap tanks that feature ATGM missiles. Um, the North Korean version of this vehicle is actually dirt cheap. It actually has a higher uh, rocket accuracy than this version here, the, um, the Bastion which is a Russian uh, ATGM system, and it's uh, it's practically an APC, though it is very effective. I'm actually going to deploy one of those here because I want to uh, get some offensive action going into uh, Dmitry and Ivan in a little bit. So we'll buy one of those. Again, recon um, troops, you have your generic her helicopters, you have your generic recon infantry and some North Korean snipers just to, uh, to sort of sum them up. And um, the Chinese get a very, very, very uh, unique little uh, ATGM car, the ZLF-92. It's very, very expensive at 80 points. It's very fast at a at a off-road speed of 95 kilometers per hour. Um, it's amphibious, and the main thing is that yeah, experienced players will notice that thing. Um, just holy crap! It has a three kilometer range and a 70% accuracy on its tow missile, meaning that it can practically peg off vehicles and it does 26 AP power, meaning that it's able to take out um, practically some of the highest tanks inside the game um, just using that. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really show you guys that just at the moment, um, but another supplementary vehicle, because I can only buy two of these, is the ZDF-89. Uh, Again, fairly high range, uh, decent accuracy, not as great 
great as those guys. Um, but again, another power play unit. In terms of air power, uh, they have some generic guys. Um, and, and a pretty useful unit is the ZA, uh, the Z9A TY90. Um, these guys, they they cost a lot, but they have a great anti-helicopter rocket launcher, which is one thing. And for aircraft, I have a humble amount. Unfortunately, the uh, the Asian uh, Red Four players, they, they honestly don't have very good aircraft. Um, so I just sort of went with whatever there. I have three of these MiG 23s uh, because they're very cost-effective. Um, um, anti-aircraft uh, things. You see that they have a Vampil missile that has a 7 kilometer range, um, but that's not what makes them efficient. Uh, it's the high accuracy with them, and they do 6 HE power, meaning that they take six, ch 6 chunks of life, which are these little blocks, out of the enemy plane, assuming that you land a su uh, successful hit. And what that translates into is a very, very powerful um, anti-plane unit if you use them in mass and for the uh, for the red for a faction just in general um in mass is the main thing so what i think i'll do here is that i need some more troops on the map because i see some glaring gaps over here um, but again, I can buy a ton of these BM-24s, and as you may have noticed there, I spotted his enemy comms vehicle to be in this general vicinity. So what I want to do is that I want to mask these very accurate, very high power um, rocket launchers, meaning that they also have a very high uh, AOE, that's area of effect. Um, so I really just want to get my sniper team to spot for us here, and I want to peg off that uh, that command vehicle that's lurking inside that zone. So we'll see what happens. Um, again, these guys are fairly fast, so I can buy them. They'll just sort of speed their way, and they, they unfortunately have very abysmal armor. They are literally just uh, a rack of AT things welded on the back of a truck. So they're up here. They have a low range, but I mean, their their uh, their abilities in terms of uh, in terms of firepower is just great. I'm gonna drive them up over here to my uh, ZD troops simply because the closer that they are to the enemy, the better that they fire off. I'm actually gonna hide my ATGM capabilities here by a little bit. And what I want to do is that I just want to unleash the beast on that command vehicle as best as I can. It'd be kind of cool if um, if you could actually hide these sniper teams a little bit better, just like that. I want them to I just sort of hide in that little bush. These sniper teams may actually be able to pick off that vehicle too. Because uh, this thing... Oh, actually, no, I thought this was a little command jeep, but um, apparently not. With the uh, with the Commonwealth faction, they had a sniper rifle that could actually pick off vehicles, but unfortunately, these, red, uh, these North Korean guys, uh, as is uh, one, cannot... Still a fairly effective vehicle, though. And again, unleash the beast. These guys, very, very high aiming time and reloading time, but a very, very deadly barrage. I believe 10 HE power is pretty much the, uh, the, the you know, operational maximum. Um, some vehicles will have higher than it, but uh, very, it'll be very, very rare. Some of the biggest artillery guns um, actually have a comparable power. So yeah, it's gonna coat this area. It's gonna take that thing out, and um, with those high at, with those high uh, explosive rounds, as you can see there, it it coats the the zone. I the, the little circle was maybe this big, and yeah, it just demolishes the place. Takes that vehicle out quite nicely, and uh, you know, really the game moves forward from there. So I believe this was uh, where was my recon tank? I did buy one. I remember buying one. Did that? No, it wasn't a recon tank, it was a Nurgle tank. Alright, well, we'll send that up. I think I'll try to get it to go around over here. And I'm going to try to make another infantry push, really. Lots of infantry pushes around here. That is the uh, that is sort of what uh, we're operating under. Hmm. What else can we buy here? I have some of these SU bombers, and they're not necessarily good in themselves, but they, um, one of the things that this, this Red Dragon setup lacks is that, uh, the Red Dragons, they, they really don't have very much in terms of air power. Um, they have very few things that are comparable, really, to the, uh, the NATO players, so I bought some of those bombers, simply because it's generally nice to have them on the, on the defensive, although on the offensive, I, I highly doubt that they are very useful. I'm rather surprised we didn't get flanked around the side here yet, but, um, man, you know what, anything goes, really. 
And over here, I'm gonna get the AT squad to set itself up. And we're gonna get our guys to move around here. So yeah, um, as you could probably tell, I have some of these QW guys, and these guys are just general infantry. They're armed with a fairly accurate but short range um, surface-to-air missile, and they're really just here for the for the sake of being here. I want to pick up that tank. I'm going to see if I, I can get my Sing Hung to to deal any damage with that. My infantry will move up here. If they see anything, the guys with the heat rifle in the back will be able to get a few rounds off, hopefully, and uh, they'll hopefully be able to suppress suppress them. Tank's also going to be do, doing a good job of that as well. And I can see here that we probably need a few more infantry squads, so I'll get those guys here, and we'll get them set up as well. Um, one thing that the Chinese and the uh, the North Korean decks have is that they actually have a copious amount of these... Uh, a copious amount of these... What do, what do you call them? Militia guys. Um, they're, they're actually five-point infantry. Um, personally, I've yet to find a use for them, so I don't have any on this deck um, at, at hand, although they are available, and I suppose uh, that you do have some uses for them. Oh, they're going to go for my uh, little tank over here. It's only 25 points, so it's not too much. I'm going to see if I can just get out this AH's uh, range, really just kite it over here because he might bring his infantry in. It looks like we have some sight over this road, so we might be able to just pick that off and take that thing out. And in the meantime, I think I'll, I think it's time to get our AT troops, or AA troops, to just sort of crawl up these hills and move a little bit farther up, which is a good thing, too. Oh, are they going to find my sniper team? Hopefully not. These guys, uh, I swear I left them in a bush. Hmm. Fair enough. Now, my artillery is actually ready for another uh, strike, so we might see that happening too. Let's get the infantry to crawl forward a little bit, and I'll get these guys to actually peek over this little hill by a little bit too. Ah, they found that... Uh, oh, they found a lot of enemy units over here. Looks like they have some uh, some infantry here. Uh, one thing that you can get, you can look at is the, the health bar of the units. Typically, regular infantry will have like 10 bars of health like this. Are they, what are they firing at? Oh, they took out my little cheapo tank. Typically, um, regular infantry will have 10 bars of health, uh, along with some special forces. Typically, like, you know, mixture, like, expensive or, or rather um, heavy ATGM, as I, I like to call it, or alternatively, heavy AA will actually have five units like this. And specialized units, such as these guys, such as the, the pure ATGM and pure AA guys, will have two health bars. What I saw over there were reservist units, I believe. So what we'll do here is uh, we'll split up our artillery barrage i'll call in three of them here and i'll call in four of them later on as our troops move forward here and again this is because these bm24s um, very very long uh, uh, aiming and reload time and in general i mean they don't carry that many missiles but they're very deadly missiles yeah so it looks like we pegged off one thing over there probably not the squad but maybe the vehicle and that's gonna go in pick off another thing over there I want that infantry squad dead, so I think I'll get uh, another shot fired. And as you can probably tell, the corrected shot versus the uncorrected shot, it, it honestly doesn't matter. These things have a very, very small zone of fire either way. Um, I mean, they're still pretty damn lethal. So we get a barrage going down here. That'll smack pretty much everything inside the terrain. Uh, what it doesn't hit, it'll panic. What it uh, doesn't panic, it'll hit. And it'll just wreck them like that. It looks like we panicked our own guys too, which is a little unfortunate. But I, you know what? That works for us. These these little um, artillery pieces they actually don't use that much supply as well. So you can you can, generally speaking, keep them on one base for a very long time too. Um, again, adds to their uh, adds to their functionality. And let's see, they seem to be winning this uh, grind battle over here, these three guys, and they're doing a fairly good job at um, providing the vast majority of these uh, points, but over here I suppose we're making small, uh, we're making a little bit of progress here and there. And what do they have here? So it looks like just a lone infantryman inside this area, yeah, and there we go, reserve infantry gives off uh, five points. 
Um, I'm actually going to pull my troops back here. I'm going to get some new guys to uh, to actually take their spots because we want we want to conserve points. And what we can do to uh, fulfill that is uh, we can just reinforce our guys if we have the opportunity to disengage like this. And again, this deck it doesn't have very much anti-air potential, so I'm I'm going to try to buy a lot of these um, these little two-man a. AA teams and put them way out in front simply because uh, when you're playing with these fairly expensive units, I might add, um, 